Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. I am constantly getting asked for like camera setting advice, uh, lighting advice, audio advice, etc. And I'm actually a huge technology geek. Geek? Lover? Enthusiast? So today's video is all about my tips for creating beauty content. This includes YouTube videos, Instagram photos, reels, TikToks. It all applies. Now this is not a content strategy video, this is purely the technical aspects of creating content. And I will try to keep this video as beginner friendly as possible with my technical jargon. Now let's get into it. Okay, first up, let's talk camera tips. My camera is set up slightly higher than eye level, like if I look at eye level now, that is eye level. So the camera is slightly above eye level and then tilted down to face me. This is generally more aesthetically pleasing because it helps angle the jawline and hide any double chin. <laughs> now lenses, the wider your lenses, so that means the smaller the focal length number is, the smaller your ears are going to look and the bigger your nose is going to look. Think of it as getting closer and closer to looking like a fish-eyed lens. Typically 50 to 85 is like the French kiss of having your face proportionate, but that means the camera is going to be several meters back from where you are filming, which just isn't realistic for the average person. For talking to camera shots like this, I typically like to shoot at around 28 millimeters to 35 millimeters. I'm currently shooting at 28 millimeters, and for photography, realistically, I try to get as close to 50 millimeters as possible. If it was like a professional shoot, I would try to get close to 85, but for Instagram, just try to get close to 50. Even stuff like this, 35 is fine. Today I'm shooting with my Lumix S5 camera and just the 20 to 60 millimeter kit lens. This lens is fantastic for YouTube because it has that 35 millimeter that I like to shoot at and also that 50 millimeter that I like to take photos at. So it's really just a great versatile lens for content creation. The Lumix S5 is also a great value because it is a full frame camera. This is where having a full frame camera really comes in handy because if you're like the majority of people People, including myself and don't have a full-on professional studio setup you can fit more in the frame without needing a wider focal length so like I said I'm shooting at 35 right now you're probably you're less than a meter away from me like if I just lean forward I can touch the camera sorry I moved you like if I were to go to its widest 20 oop, wrong way I could fit so much more in the frame and you are less than a meter away from me but like I said, I like 28. And having a full frame camera means that your video footage is going to look a lot better in low light situations as well. Next, if you want that blurry background, you will need to create some distance between yourself and the background and get a lens with a low f-stop number. This is also called aperture or depth of field. Right now I'm shooting with an f-stop of four, which I like. You're still getting that blurry background and that definition of me versus the background without it being too blurry. Whereas if I were to increase the number on the f-stop, like now we're shooting at f-stop 9.5, you can see the background is a lot more in focus than what it was before, but I like the blurrier background, so I'll go back to that. For video, I am very happy with an f-stop of four for photography I'm like a, a sucker I just love an f-stop of 2.8 now for the physical camera tips having a camera with a flip out screen is amazing you can make sure that you're centered in the frame and that the autofocus is in focus I honestly would not even consider using a camera that doesn't have a flip out screen and autofocus also for sit down videos like this I like to connect my camera to my iMac called tethering. It's so I can use my iMac as a remote for the camera. I can change the camera settings from my iMac. I have a giant view of myself on my iMac screen and I can use it as a remote to start recording or take photos. If I wanted to change the exposure, all I have to do is press a button. It's also very, very handy for taking photos because all I have to do is click my mouse. I can also connect the Lumix S5 to my phone via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and use it as a remote, change the camera settings and also see what the camera sees. This is vital for me because I am a one-man band. There is no one helping me create content. So this way I can see what's going on on my phone Quickly hit the two second timer, hide my phone. That was like me throwing my phone away, but I didn't want to throw my phone. Hide my phone and then take the photo. Now for filming settings, filming in 1080p is fine, but if you can film in 4K, I would definitely recommend it because one, if you edit in 1080p, then you can easily crop in without losing any of the detail and then you don't have to buy a super expensive zoom lens. 
And two, so when you upload to YouTube, YouTube rewrites your video file into a lower quality format. This is called a codec. YouTube has two codecs. One, it's all right. The other is absolute trash garbage. 4K videos on YouTube get higher priority of that decent codec instead of that absolute trash codec that will completely destroy your quality and skew the colors. The only other way I know of to get the decent quality codec is to have a large following, which it's impossible when you're just starting out. The Lumix S5 has beautiful 4K footage up to 60 frames per second and 1080 up to, I wanna say 120 frames a second, which is great for those like slow-mo intro shots of your finished makeup look. I currently film most of my client footage in 4K, but I will be switching to 4K on YouTube once I get a new computer. Okay, so lighting is very important. It drastically improves the camera quality as well as the viewer's ability to see things. In my opinion, natural lighting always looks the best. If you have a north or south facing window, film in front of it, take your photos in front of it, you're set. Now direct sunlight is way too harsh. If you're filming or taking photos in the sun in the middle of the day, you'll get harsh shadows on your face and it's pretty much impossible to keep your eyes open. The exception to this is golden hour. It's the hour before the sun sets and the hour after the sun rises where the sun is really low in the sky and the light is just golden and diffused and beautiful and the most perfect lighting for photography ever. The downside to indirect natural light and why I switched to artificial light is the ever-changing white balance. I got sick of having to change the white balance every five minutes from the sun being either too warm or too cool as the sun moves with the clouds. So this way I control the light, I control the color temperature. For my lights, I use basic three-point lighting plus a ring light. I find this is what lights my face the best. You want to make sure that your key light and your fill light are even so you are evenly lit. For my key and fill light, I have two LED panels that are roughly at 45 degree angles at me and they're both the same strength and color temperature. Now you do not need LED panels, especially these LED panels. They are very expensive and very much overkill for just YouTube. You can also use fluorescent tube lights. These LED panels are actually the LED version of the fluorescent tubes Desi Perkins uses and her lighting is very nice. Or you can use cheap bulb soft boxes of Amazon that I hate. This is why. One, they use a lot of power, so they get very hot. And two, their color temperatures are also wildly inaccurate. So if you're starting off and really want artificial light or don't have access to natural light, I would definitely recommend just saving up that little bit longer to get fluorescent tube lights over the cheap Amazon bulb soft boxes or some cheaper LED panels. The ring light I use is literally on its lowest setting. I just use it to soften shadows around my nose and chin. You can go all the way up to this, which I would never use, or I could turn it off. And this is how I look without the ring light. The last light is the backlight, also known as the hair light. For this, I just use a cheap fluoro tube from Bunnings with a cool white tube. This just helps light up the background and the back of your head, so you get more of a separation from your hair to the background. Also, all of my lights are set to 6,000 Kelvin color temperature. I hate yellow light. It will make your teeth and the whites of your eyes look yellow. So for beauty content, I like to stick to 6,000 Kelvin. Also, hold on a sec, let me grab them. I have never heard another beauty guru mention this, but if your lights are hurting your eyes or making you squint, get honeycomb grids. These just Velcro over the top of my lights and make it feel like I don't have giant lights shining into my eyes. So, sound. Now, on YouTube, people generally tolerate low video quality. They will not tolerate low audio quality. If you're starting off, try playing back the audio with the built-in mic on your camera. A lot of new cameras have actually really decent inbuilt microphones. If you want to improve your quality or the playback audio is no good, you have an overwhelming amount of microphone choices to choose from. <laughs> These are my recommendations. For talking to camera content like I'm doing right now, a shotgun mic is the easiest to use. Most of them, you just plug it in and you're good to go. If you're filming someone that has a lot of background noise or noisy neighbors, you might want to invest in a lavier mic. These simply clip onto your shirt and then clip onto the transceiver and receiver if it's wireless. 
but these do take a few more steps to set up versus the shotgun mic. If you want that sweet, smooth audio for voiceovers, you'll want a condenser microphone. USB condenser microphones are the cheapest and easiest to use. You just plug them into your computer, open up your editing software, hit record, and you're good to go. Honestly, for YouTube, these are great. And even if you don't want to buy one of these straight away, use your phone. This is like a $2,000 microphone right here. It just takes a bit more fiddling to record in voice memos, then transfer it to your computer and then sync it up with the video, but you most likely already have a phone. Also, if you're hearing a lot of gross saliva noises, you're dehydrated. Go drink a butt ton of water. If you find you have a really obvious echo in your audio, lay down a rug or some soft things like blankets on the floor. Alternatively, you can buy some acoustic panels, but personally, I like the option of free things that I already have. If you are new and have a Mac, I recommend starting off with iMovie and then eventually upgrading to Final Cut Pro. If you are new and have a PC, I recommend starting with DaVinci Resolve and then eventually upgrading to the paid version of DaVinci Resolve. Me personally, I use Adobe Premiere Pro, but Adobe have fallen so far behind with optimizing their video editing software. So unless you already have a Creative Cloud subscription that includes Premiere Pro, I would not recommend starting off on it, at least at the time of me filming this video. I really hope they get their act together. For editing photos, I use both Photoshop and Lightroom, both on my desktop and on my mobile. Now I could go into tips for this, but then this video would be an hour long. So if you guys want me to do a separate video on how I edit photos in general and for Instagram, let me know. Okay, so now some just random tips that I can think of. The first one is to practice talking alone to yourself because when you start off, it feels very unnatural. But I can confirm, the more you do it, the easier it gets, guys. Another one is that when you are talking to the camera, make sure you are talking down the barrel of the lens, not to the viewfinder. You want to make sure that your audience feels like you're talking to them, not a ghost next to them. If you have hooded or deep set eyes like me, closing your eyes to show the makeup can look kind of weird. So what I like to do is tilt my head and look to the side. Also with photos to show the makeup, I like to tilt my head back so you can see the eyeshadow, then you can see my double chin. So in my Instagram photos, just exposing myself here, I like to do this. And then you can't see my double chin. <laughs> That's why so many of my Instagram makeup photos are like that. Ooh, another tip. Not sure if this will work, I got my professional lights on. In photos, if you're finding that your eyes and eyeshadow looks really dark, hold a piece of white card underneath your face to bounce the light up. Okay, so that's all the tips I can think of when making beauty content. If you guys have any questions that I didn't answer in this video, feel free to leave me the question in the comments below. Feel free to use technical jargon if you know it. But I hope you guys learned something or found this video helpful, and I'll see you again soon. Bye, guys! Can you guys hear my neighbors just like jumping up and down on their floor? This is something YouTubers never tell you. It's very hard to film videos. <laughs> I'm currently shooting at 28 millimeters, and for photography, freaking motorcycle in my complex. For my lights, there's the fly again. This fly is just, stop it. Go hang out with my bananas.